We're looking this week at the encounter of the risen Christ of the Apostle Paul and that life-changing encounter that he had. And we're filming outside the Obion County Library. I chose the library because Paul was a student and a library traditionally has been a place of study, a place of learning. And Paul was a student of the Torah. He was a member of the Pharisaic party, the Perushim. He was uh, steeped in the tradition of zeal and promoting the, uh, the Torah and following uh, the law of God and being obedient to the covenant and wiping out anything that was going against that. Certainly within other Jewish people, if they weren't being faithful, they needed to be corrected and, uh, and anything other than that would hinder the coming of Messiah, would hinder uh, God from returning his people to where they needed to be and liberating them. It would stop the new Passover, it would stop the new Exodus and the new creation. So Paul being a student of the Torah, being a student of scriptures, had been steeped in it from his earliest days, his studies in, uh, in, with Gamaliel at, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, to this uh, stamping out of this Christian sect, this, this new thing, this way as it was called, that to Paul was an abomination. For Paul, who was longing for God's return, longing for the glory to come back to Israel, longing for the temple to be filled with God's glory and for Israel to be set free from exile because it was considered during the time of Paul and certainly during the time of Jesus that they were still, the Jewish people, even though they were back in Jerusalem, were still in exile because God's glory had not returned to the temple. And so there was this expectancy, this longing for uh, the return of God's glory and God's people being set free from the bondage of the nations, the goyim, uh, the Gentile powers. And so as Paul is proceeding to Damascus, he gets letters from the high priest to not only uh, combat Christianity, even though it wasn't called that at that time, but this new sect that was called the Way, these followers of the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, that uh, they were trying to stamp that out within Jerusalem. And of course, the, those who were persecuted fled. And so Paul wanted to stamp it out further. And he had gone to the high priest to get letters of recommendation, letters to the synagogue officials in those other cities so that Paul could go and bring people back to stand before the Sanhedrin who were obviously uh, heretics, who were proclaiming things that were damaging to uh, the Jewish faith and damaging to God's glory coming back and hindering that. And so that's where we pick up the story today. Paul's on his way to Damascus from Jerusalem. Damascus is north of Jerusalem. Um, it would have taken him roughly a couple of weeks to get there on foot, probably riding a donkey. If you've ever ridden a donkey, it's not that much faster. So it would have been a couple of weeks. Plenty of time to, to think, to meditate, to pray. Of course, Paul's a man of prayer. Uh, he would have said the Shema at least three times a day. <coughs> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He would have been saying that. He would have been focused on God in his zeal, possibly longing to have a vision like, uh, like uh, Ezekiel did of God, this, this wonderful vision, or like Isaiah. Uh, and Paul had plenty of time to think and to meditate. And of course, his traveling companions are of the same stripe he is. They are zealous for the God of Israel and zealous for the, the faithfulness of God's people to return and the revival movement and all of that. And so that's what's in his mind as he's contemplating Torah, contemplating the zeal of, of Elijah, the zeal of Phineas, uh, as we looked at yesterday, and certainly uh, the vision of Ezekiel of, and longing for that. And that was very prominent in that time that Paul lived to uh, not only long for visions like that, but they had people who would train you in how to possibly have these visions in meditating on particular scriptures and doing so. Quite possible Paul was doing that. And as he's approaching, breathing out threats of murder against the disciples of the Lord, um, it says that as he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you using the Lord of 
who are you, Master? Who are you that are speaking to me? And he's having this vision. He's having this that he's longed for, this vision of God, this light that is shown around him. And, and he's hearing the voice of God. And he's asking, identify yourself just like Moses. What's your name? Uh, who are you, Yahweh? Who are you? It's not so much, uh, he knew it's God. It's not so much, well, who are you? No, he knew who he, he knew who God is. It's not a question of it. It's more like, show me who you are. Let me see you. And then you get this. This is the kicker. Remember, Paul is going out to stamp out those who are proclaiming the name of Jesus or Yeshua. That, that That's heretical. It's wrong. It's an abomination. It needs to be stamped out. And as he's doing that, he has this vision. And then he asks, who is this? Who are you, God? And the voice said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Wow, that had to be a shocking thing to discover that you were right in your zeal. You were right in longing to know the God of Israel. And then you find out that in longing to have the vision of God and you have the vision of God, you discover that the one you're persecuting, the one you're trying to stamp out the followers of is God himself. That had to be a stunning uh, experience of the risen Christ. And of course, Jesus tells him, get up and enter the city. It will be told you what you must do. And the men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. And Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Three days he has to contemplate this shocking experience that shook him to the very foundations of his being because he discovered that in his zeal to stamp out and to purify and to glorify God that he was actually persecuting the Son of God who is himself God. That God has come into our world and is delivering the world and he was in the process of going against God. That had to be shocking, had to be stunning, and it shook him to his core. Well, any experience of God like that is going to shake us to our foundations, and it should, because God is God, and He is awesome and holy and marvelous and wonderful. And to find out that in your pursuit of worshiping Him, worshiping him and seeking Him, you were going about it in the wrong way, has got to be a big kick in the head, and it was for, it was for Saul. And we're going to discover later on how Jesus ministers to him through another disciple and what happens to Paul and how this life-changing experience really changed the shape of how Christianity was spread and the, this Saul who was the greatest persecutor of the way became the greatest preacher of the way. Well I look forward to sharing more with that to you tomorrow. Don't forget this Sunday our title is Blinded by the Light looking at this last encounter of the resurrected Jesus Christ. I pray that you know the love of God. I pray that you experience it every day. Um, he loves you. He gave his son that you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy unspeakable right here and right now. I pray you have that today. See you tomorrow.